Hi guys, welcome to Big Laws Official. Today I want to focus on uh, kind of a topic that I've seen, you know, a, a lot of people kind of talking about, a lot of people questioning about, is um, training programs. Um, and you, I'm sure you've seen, I offer training programs online, a lot of other great athletes do and great coaches. And I see, and this isn't going to apply to everyone, but I see a lot of you guys kind of purchasing the programs and then not sticking to them. <laughs> now, if I can give you kind of one bit of advice from, from personal experience, it's, it's to be smart and stick to these programs. Give them a chance. You know, if it's a 12-week program, stick to it and be realistic with the goals that you're putting in. I've had random questions sent to me, such as like one person sent me a qu um, question, do I use the, the numbers that in my competition that I have coming up to program or do I use my PBs? So I responded, I was like, well, are your PBs better than the numbers in your competition? And they were like, no, they're not. So if they try to use the numbers in the competition, those numbers are already too high. And straight away, when you work out your percentages that you should be working from, week one, two, week three, you're going to be going in too heavy and you're going to burn out quickly. So it's important to stick to, to your honest own abilities. So, for instance, you know, if you're a 300 kilo deadlifter, you've pulled a good quality, smooth 300 kilo deadlift in a powerlifting comp, for instance. I'm happy for you to kind of go in and use that as your PB. If you've pulled an ugly 300 using straps, hitching it up um, in a strongman comp or in the gym, that's too much for a program because there's still weaknesses in the movement. And it's something that I, you know, I've, I've, I've been down that road before. So it's not, you know, you're not the only person making that mistake. We, we've all done it before. You see a lot of bad lifts in competition that are given and that's fine in competition, but you don't want to be lifting like that in the gym. In the gym, your technique should be spot on. You should be making sure you're working at strengthening every single area. So you're making sure your glutes are working, your hamstrings are working, not just kind of jacking it up your thighs, trying to get the lift done from A to B. Um, and I think a lot of people make the mistake of trying to almost overplay what they're capable of or trying to overestimate what they're aiming to achieve. One of the best bits of advice I can give is to focus on continued steady progress rather than to learn, trying to make huge increases in, in performance very, very quickly. If you go too heavy in your programs, like I said, week one, two, three, you're already going too heavy. Those first few weeks are kind of laying the foundations. If you're burnt out by week three, week four, week five, there's no way you're going to get to week 12 of the program and hit a PB. So kind of underplay your numbers a bit. Make sure your technique's solid. Make sure you're working hard still. You know, make sure your nutrition is good. Make sure your sleeping is good. All these factors are going to make a, a, a have an impact in the end result. But I kind of like a saying, it's better to not know how strong you are than know exactly how weak you are. And if you kind of go into the gym and you're failing lifts and you're making things look very, very hard and ugly, you kind of lose confidence in yourself. Whereas if you keep pulling things and uh, lifting, whatever lift it might be, you keep making it look really comfortable and easy, you, get, you kind of build that confidence that there's always more in the tank and you can progress and make steady progress. Um, a great example is looking at, just look at someone like Luke Richardson, who's right now the best power lifter in the country. He goes to competitions and makes everything look comfortable. He's the only one that really knows how much more is left inside, but we all kind of sit there watching, oh, he's got loads more in the tank. But I'd rather see that and see him keep um, progressing than go in and see him failing lifts or hurting himself, getting injured. Um, and I've, you know, I've made the mistake of going too heavy in the gym, too heavy in competitions and, and hurting myself. Um, but if you keep progressing, you'll keep getting better. If you get an injury or you kind of hurt yourself or you kind of, you know, try and go too heavy, you end up going backwards anyway. So be... <laughs> Be sensible with the progress um, and the percentages that you put in, whether it's my programs that you're using, anyone else's, you know, you've got to be smart. You need someone that's kind of going to be realistic and honest with you. And if you want to buy one of my programs and you're not sure whether your lifts are kind of legitimately the right numbers to put in, send me the videos of the lift. I'll, ha I'll happily kind of analyze them and kind of hopefully give you some pointers. But also I'll be completely honest with you and let you know if I think, yeah, that's the right numbers to put in or no, you need to rein it in a little bit you're looking for progress so at the end of the program we're looking for an increase in your performance you're better off doing that small increase especially if it's a gym lift and feeling like there is more in the tank when you have to compete i always find having that confidence that you can lift more is, is a big thing i know so many guys that feel like they've got to lift competition weights every single week but you look at the top top lifters I just I mentioned Luke, but look at Eddie, for instance, when Eddie pulled 500 kilos, the most he pulled in the gym was 450, 
50 kilos less than, than he went for in the competition. When I've done my biggest competition pulls, when I pulled 435, the most I pulled in the gym was 400. So, you know, 35 kilos less, and I felt good for more as well. You, you, you're always better off thinking there's a little bit more in the tank than, than going flat out and failing and, and ending up essentially probably hurting yourself, which, you know, a lot of people do. A lot of people, I've seen you kind of tagging in the videos and you, your lifts on week one or week three, week four, they're, they're looking hard. Usually that's th because you've just tried to overestimate your abilities. And I know it's kind of like a slap in the face, but I'd rather sit here and be honest with you and help you guys progress and get better than just say, oh yeah, yeah, you're doing great. Be realistic and get those continued progress, okay? Five to 10 kilos improvement in a lift is huge. If you, particularly, you know, if you're a lighter weight lifter, you, you've got to be looking at one and a half, one and a quarter kilo sometimes onto a lift is, is progress. It's easier when you're bigger to, to make those bigger um, jumps. But if you can kind of do a 12-week program and put five kilos on a lift, that's fantastic. Set up another program, another five kilos, and then another five kilos, and you suddenly, you know, by the end of the year, you're 25 kilos increase on, on all your lifts. That's a huge pro um, amount of progress. In four years' time, that's 100 kilos on your lifts, and you, you kind of, you know, the, the level that you're competing at right now goes to a completely different area. One of the biggest weaknesses, or not weaknesses, but things that I do see a lot of, is people enter competitions they haven't been training that long. They've made some good steady progress. And to be quite honest with you, you can improve doing anything as a beginner. As a beginner, it's easy to make progress. You just get to the gym, consistently train, and you'll get better. But as you get to that intermediate level, progress slows down. And you need to really then focus on having some structure, having some smart training, and having a, a decent coach that can help you, and following structured training that's going to help you. What a lot of people do is they look at the numbers in a comp, oh yeah, six months time, I'll be hitting that, thinking they're going to put 60 kilos on their lifts. Rubbish. <laughs> You're not going to put 60 kilos on a lift once you've kind of, you know, got to a certain level. You've got to be focusing on those realistic gains of five or 10 kilo improvements. Um, and that will keep you progressing consistently rather than hitting the wall and going backwards, which I see so many people do. You know, they're, strongman's tough, powerlifting's tough, you know, any sports is hard. And the higher up the level you go, the harder and harder it is on the body. So be smart with it. Focus on, you know, the other areas need to be right. Sleep, food, recovery, all that needs to be focused on. But get your training right as well. You know, you get all those things right. Training will be easier. Get your numbers right. Focus on that progress and you will keep getting better. Be realistic, though. It's, um, I think I, I'm not sure who said it first. Probably Benny Magnuson. I've seen him post it. But it's better to have no idea how strong you are than know exactly how weak you are. Think about that. Let me comment below. Are you guys kind of guilty of doing that in your own training? Um, feel free to get in touch. I'll try and reply and uh, give you guys some advice. But I um, hope you find that, you know, beneficial. I know sometimes it's a bit of a slap in the face to hear things like that. But if you want to keep progressing and you want to get better, it's, it's important to be told the truth rather than just be sold a load of rubbish and, you know, told, I'll oh, take this and you're going to get strong. It doesn't work like that. It's hard work, hard progress. You know, grafting every day in the gym takes time. You know, you, you, these strongest guys in the world, they, they didn't just turn up yesterday. They've been training hard for a long time and you just need to keep grafting, keep working, keep getting better, keep looking at new ways to improve, keep focusing on technique. So many things that you can just keep improving at. But over time, you'll get better, you'll get to where you want to be. I hope you find it useful. Um, comment below and we will see you guys soon.